Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Hi Mr. President, uh, thank you very much for giving us uh, your time this afternoon, uh, Zambia time, early morning here in Washington. How has your day been so far, Mr. President? So far, so good. Uh, when you're a politician, it can't be a straight line, so ups and downs. So let, let's look at um, democracy in Zambia. Um, you handed over peacefully. I was in Zambia when the last election happened. Uh, you handed over peacefully to President Hakainde Ichelema. Um, I saw both of you chatting happily and jovially. So what can you say about Zambia's democracy currently? Well, speaking as of now, I can safely and confidently tell you that Zambia's democracy is under siege, under very, very serious threat. Like today, this afternoon, a party belonging to the uh, Alliance of Political Parties in the Opposition, a uh, New Heritage Party, was scheduled to hold a public rally in the Chipata compound, and the notice was given, and all the protocols were done, complied with to the letter. But uh, last today, we saw a group of policemen uh, armed to the teeth with the uh, United uh, Party for National Democracy. They said, what, 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 what can United Party for National Development, UPND, the ruling party, uh, flags carrying uh, machetes, pangas, you name it, all sorts of weapons, and uh, saying we won't hold this meeting here, and the police were watching. Uh, so there is no democracy to talk about. The democracy to speak freely has also been uh, uh, impinged upon. Most of our colleagues are in custody as we talk because of the speaking out, airing their opinion and views. So I think the democracy we left in 2021 in the of power is no longer there. Well, Mr. No Mr. President, Mr. President, some of your critics are saying that similar things happened during your presidency and that cadres or source supporters from the Patriotic Front disrupted activities of the UPND when they were in opposition and that they said you you don't have the moral right. They said to criticize <laughs> similar actions that are happening now. How how do you respond to that? I, I don't know whether I have the moral right or not, but I can tell you if it was bad for the Zambian people to be done by me, it can't be better to be done by it. That's why the Zambian people said no to PF, and I think as a person who's been there. And I believe that if they said it was bad, it must still be bad for, for, for the president and his ruling political party to do it. And you can't say that because my party did it, I shouldn't do it. I, I shouldn't condemn them. After all, better place to even advise him and say, my friend, at the rate you are going, you plant the country into chaos and your reign might be one term of this. And you believe you may I warned him on this call when we met after the handover. I told him. Mr. President, you talked about some politicians from the opposition who have been arrested we also heard about um your wife and some of your children being arrested uh over issues of graft some people are saying that if somebody has committed a crime you are a lawyer they should be dealt with according to the law and your wife and children were arrested they are going through the legal process. Why wouldn't you allow the legal process to unfold? And then you can react. Excuse me. You <laughs> <laughs> I'm not stopping in the legal process being done. You know, I have been called a thief, corrupt, and all sorts of names. But no one has told me what I stole or where in lies my corruption. 
And I told the, the people, I said, if you find any corruption, please bring it forth. And they've not done that. They've decided to peel my family like an onion by ripping off the, the peel and trying to get at me, instead of just coming for me. You see, my wife was unemployed. She was depending on me. And I was supporting her like every other person supporting her wife. You support your wife. You support your children. And if you support them, and then they utilize that money for some purposes, and they even tell the law enforcement judges that it, it's this guy who provided the resources. Why can't you go for him and ask him how much was your salary? How did you acquire this property? Mind you, I was a lawyer before I became a politician. And I wasn't just a, a lot of the new lawyer. I was a, one of the top notch lawyers. That I can tell you. But you see, I made my money. And I slowly, I brought my children into business. And they began working on their own. And so did my wife. So how we acquired the so-called money, wealth or whatever, is there for people to see. There's a track record from my practice as a lawyer to my political time to now. And this thing did not just come overnight. So for me to get everybody, all my friends, and say you are thieves because you belong to Edgar, tell me one contract, just one contract, which you think I participated in and got money. Uh, or I got a bribe. Nothing is coming through. But all these guys have been saying, oh, let's say he was running a crypto regime and so on. It found nothing. You see, what has happened is that we had an opposition which perfected the, the art of propaganda and peddling of falsehood. And they priest things, spin doctors. Now they're trying to spin the reality. They're failing because the reality is that they failed to deliver. And they said, no, we are failing to deliver because the room was stop. Now, what did I steal? What project did I steal from? You need to identify what ministry did I steal from? You know, or what project? You just said, call me a thief and you leave it at that. This is very, very unfair. I heard one minister saying it's okay for people to grab what room was stop. But where did I steal? Because if you steal, there has to be a place where you're stealing from. When you stop. And what you stop? And then they could take you to task and in the interest of justice give you a chance to explain your side and then courts of law will decide and so on. But what they've done here is they've said, look, your wife earned three million in the last ten years, but the property she has is twenty million. Forgetting that I was there with her and I was supporting her. And she says my husband helped me. And you can't come and look at my bank accounts, look at my uh, income and assess whether I was able to grow her property up to the time of leaving office. It's very unfair. My children have been working. They've been to school. Some of them are running businesses. I was supplying them with money when chance allows. They'd come to me, Dad, can you help us capitalize this and capitalize that? And they've been told, these guys, in the Drug Enforcement Commission, SEC and everyone, that, look, I raised so much. Dad gave me so much. Or elsewhere, somebody said, Dad bought this for me as a gift. Now, who grabs something from a son or a daughter who said, Dad gave me? You go to your dad and ask him, Dad, this is far too much in excess of what you would have earned over the years. Can you account for this? This is what I expect these guys to do. But they just want to keep peddling falsehood and, you know, trying to sensationalize that I'm a thief or I'm in poverty now because of stealing or stop. We never stop anything. So the new process of law should be questioned if it's being abused. You see what I mean? You should be able to look at my income. I left university in 1981, by the way. But admitted uh, shortly thereafter. And I've been practicing law. And I had some of the high profile cases. And I received good uh, money. And we were building. So you can't ask me about the farm where I came from, how I built it. You can't ask me about the two houses I had in Chawama where I came from. Now you want to ask me because, oh, we moved from Chawama to Kablonga or to Kawata. And from Kawata, people have been moving. What's wrong with prosperity? Is it a crime to prosper? So, so Mr. President, let's talk about bread and butter issues. Uh, you raised issues of the high cost of living in uh, Zambia after you officially returned to active politics. But your critics are saying things were bad and that some of the policies that you implemented while you were president 
has affected the cost of living right now. So they said it's not fair for you to criticize the effect of what you did in office, which wrongs they are trying to make right. How do you respond to that? <laughs> Peter, I didn't set the time frame for them to fix it. Eh? Yeah, they said we'll fix it by 14 hours. In the morning, it's only 10 o'clock, 12 hours, 14 hours, or 2 o'clock, I'll fix it. That time frame was not set by me or my, my opposition party, PF, or any other parties for that matter. And the gravity of the situation obtaining during the time I was president was known. And the, the fundamentals were known. And these guys were able to convince everyone that they had solutions on their fingertips. And there's elsewhere, they even said, <laughs> I've got friends who give me 28.5 billion US dollars. And in a very short time, three months, five months, we'll get things sorted out. But where are these monies coming from? Where are these monies? So it is clear that they lied. They lied and they want to continue lying. So the best thing is to have a four guy. And that guy, Lulu and his friends are the four guys. So, Mr. President, what was the motivation behind your decision to come back to active politics? Because your critics are saying that by coming back to politics, you should not enjoy what you enjoy as a former president because that you relinquish you know your security uh and and the pay that is supposed to give you they said this is according to law your critics are saying why come into active politics and then complain that you have been stripped away of the provisions that is accorded to retired politicians or including a head of state like you no i have not complained i think you heard me carefully when I launched my return to politics on the 28th of October 2023, I was very categorical. I said, I'm willing to forgo everything. And I said, if you need me, you can put my life on the stakes. That I said, right? So the time I complained is when they began interfering in my liberty, right? I have my own security. I have my own home. I have my own country and I have my own uh, welfare taken care of by my own people, the party, friends and all. So I only lamented that why should you be stripping me of these things and then pushing me and saying, no, we want to protect you. No, uh, you see, the meaning of the president to be seen, to be going without uh, this or that. I said, I, 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 I don't need you. You don't need me. So I was very clear. I won't complain at all. The time that I've complained is when I've been harassed. I said, you've stripped me of everything, but leave my liberty, my dignity, and my rights. That's what I'm saying even now. You see, one minute, I will walk the street. Somebody says, you can't walk the street because you're a former president. You are in danger of being attacked, and people might attack you, and we'll be blamed as police. That's why we're following you. The next minute, I said, but you, you really didn't know that I was former president when you're stripping of these things, please, go and put your house in order. The next minute I want to go to church, somebody goes into church and says, you can't be hosted here because you are former president. You should let us know. So, nowhere have I complained about being stripped of um, the 80% allowance that I was getting of the incumbent president. Nowhere have I complained about being stripped of the motor vehicles or the housing or anything. I'm not complaining, and I'm not complaining. Because I knew and if you heard me correctly when I said I've come back to politics, I said I've come back to politics with all it takes and please, that's what it is. Well, these guys were daring me, they would say, no, come out of your retirement because what you are doing is politics. Going to jog is politics. Going to church is politics. Going to meet friends is politics for them. And then I said, okay, if that be the case and you're compromising my liberty, let me give you the benefits. And I gave them. I'm not complaining at all. So get it from me. But Mr. President, what is, the motivation, what is the motivation behind your decision to come out of retirement and into active politics? Of course, one of them is harassment of my family members. One of them is harassment of my family members. Instead of them coming to me, trust me that your wife has got this house or your daughter has got this property, how did she acquire it? They just risked them like common criminals and paraded them, took them to court and so on. Instead of coming to ask me, because I'm the one who is providing leadership in the family and I still provide leadership in the family. 
So I realized that uh, no one in the political arena was going to fight for me unless I joined politics and fight for myself. And then matters came to a head, culmination came when uh, the party was infiltrated by paid agents of the ruling party, UPND, to take over leadership of PF against the wishes and desires of the people in PF and the constitution itself. When they allowed that infamous conference, uh, is it uh, the convention retreat from 24th October 2023? That was for me the last straw. I knew that we were going to lose it. And at that time when these things were happening, we were busy arresting Fred Mende, Dr. Fred Mende, the Socialist Party, we were busy arresting all the other leaders in the political. And these were the people who were supposed to protect me by showing for my rights and the liberties as a retired president. So I knew I had no voice but to join them so that we could do, put our uh, energies together and fight the growing dictatorship, which now has culminated into what we are seeing now. Mr. President, the ruling party has denied being involved in the problems that... Come on. Sorry, Peter. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Peter. <laughs> you see, who controls the police on Independence Day, eh, 24th October 2023, when we had a visitor from Tanzania, the president visiting as a special guest, and all the police were busy, uh, but they found time to get a conference venue. They found time to mobilize policemen to go and witness the election. They found time to work in the night to get fingerprints cleared. The following day they had a newly registered leadership of PF. And you don't know that in who runs the police, who runs the state institution of power, registrar of society, who got her to work or the team to work in the night. And then we have had sentiments by our colleagues who are messing us up by saying, look, these matters which are in court will drag until 2026 or beyond. You won't see justice as PF. And indeed, we are seeing the frustration of our members as every time we go to court, the case is adjourned for some reason. Or an excuse is given a technical note, so you have this case is thrown out. You mean you can't see the hand of the, the state and government and UPND in all this? But, but, but Mr. President, recently you were the driving force behind the United Quacha Alliance, a coalition of opposition political parties and you are on record to have said that uh perhaps there should be an early elections the government has said there will not be any election uh early election and that election will proceed as originally planned or stated in the constitution in 2026 mr president why do you call for early election because your critics are saying this is a method you are using to cause chaos, to cause disaffection, to create disunity and destabilize the country, including disturbing the country's territorial integrity by doing that. That could plunge the country into chaos, they said. How do you respond to that, Mr. President? Well, I'm, you see, I'm vindicated by the fact that the current president is on record saying that you have become unpopular because people are suffering and I think let's have an early election. This was about 2019 or so. And, and, and there's no problem with that. So speaking for the people is not uh, instigating them or inciting them to rise against the government. And he, the, the, the video in which he, the current president was urging for an early election is there. And he was even saying if the constitution is a hindrance in this respect, we can always change it because constitutions are for people. So for me, it's the feeling of the suffering of the people and the discontent which is going on, which I see and feel, which I was referring to, to say, unless something is done, the president can as well call for an early election. Nothing strange there. The president was saying, Pali Mlandu, Pali Mlandu, there is no criminality involved there. So I understand that they've got 25 dockets based on that, and I'm waiting for them to summon me. So let me go and explain what I meant and how I actually within the law. So I'm the most responsible person at the moment in the political arena, having been president, and I know what I'm talking about. 
I'm very sensitive to some of the things being signed and said because it, we can easily plan this country into chaos. And for me, my job is to advise the president in a way, but I can advise him publicly by saying, ha, ah, that's wrong, can we change? And this is what I was doing. So if that is treason, not under the Indian law. I challenge them. Mr. President, one thing I wanted to ask you is, will you be interested in meeting current president Hakan Ide Chalama to try to ease the ongoing political tension in Zambia? Will you be willing to do that? Let me tell you, if I was the precipitator or agitator of the chaos or the discontentment you are seeing, I would say I'm willing to meet him, then I would say, okay, let's buy peace. But I'm not the one. I'm just responding to the reality on the ground. So me and they are sitting together, drinking tea and shaking hands and posing for photographs. So not help. It is the people who are disgruntled. It's really going by the lofty promises he made. <laughs> That's what is the problem. So I should begin instigating and putting measures in place which will begin softening the suffering of the people right now as we go to 2026 and then probably we can find peace. It's not just about sitting down there, signing a code, shaking hands, having a cup of tea and getting photographs. It won't help. So the Zambian people are the ones who are aggrieved. And me, I'm just telling my brother that my brother, we can do better if we can have an early election. Or if we don't want to have an early election, find measures which will reduce the suffering of the people, cushion their suffering. But you know they are saying, the government is saying that the measures they are putting in place uh, because of the bad policies previous governments, including yours, have put in place will take time in order for Zambians <laughs> to see the better way <laughs> of it. So they are asking Zambians for time. They're asking for time from me? They should go back to the people, apologize. No, they're asking Zambians for time, so they will see the benefits of the policies in me. You mean that they will struggle? Yeah. Peter, if I was in their shoes, if I were in their shoes, I would go to the Zambian people first, apologize, and say, sorry, I lied. And then I can have an excuse, so I lied because I was an amateur. I didn't know much about governance. So in the last two years or so, I've discovered that it's a hell lot of a job. Please forgive me. And when they forgive me, I tell them the measures that I have to put in place now are one, two, three, so that in the cost of living you can come to 100 kwacha, not 50 kwacha, but 100 kwacha. He promised that the cost of 25 kg bag of milk will come down to 50 kwacha when he becomes president. So he has to go back to the people and say, sorry, I seek your indulgence. I was misled. I was a novice. Now I'm mature. I know these things. But then we can bring it down to 100 kwacha, not 50 kwacha, which I promised you. Or the price of fuel. This is what I'm going to do. Not me meeting him doing what? Playing the gallery? I'm not for that. But if you tell me that there are issues between me and him, which we can discuss, and which issues will affect positively the country's stability in terms of food, fine. In terms of fertilizer, fine. Yeah. So, so, Mr. In President, of fertilizer, fine. Mr. President, let me ask you. Let, let me ask you. What are your aspirations or desire for Zambia, especially in the instance of if the people decide that, okay, Mr. Lungu, um, we want you to come back to office, what do you want to do that will be right by the people of Zambia? You know, Peter, somebody asked me that question years ago, and I said my vision is collective. I said oh, Lungu has no vision. Remember? Is a clueless vision. Yeah, they, president. you were criticized yeah. for saying you have but a vision. They were yeah. saying you yeah. didn't know what you were doing. Yeah, but what I didn't what, what I didn't know to do, I did much better than the guy who knows what he's doing. But let me tell you this: I've matured to a point where now I believe deeply in collective leadership. PF uh, has joined up with the UCA, the United Quarter Alliance, and other political parties. And right now we're in the process of synthesizing or integrating our manifestos and seeing how we can come out with one manifesto. So if I'm um, privileged again to become president, I will not be I, 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 I. I we, 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 collectively. And as we go into the future, obviously we'll pick the best from all the components which are part of the United Quarter Alliance. 
That's how we proceed. Because six years down the line, we've been independent and we are failing to manage agriculture. Six years down the line, we are independent, we are finding it difficult to bring about alternative water resources. Six years down the line, we are still talking about copper, 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 copper. How about the other minerals? How about the other economic activities? I, I, I think that uh, if I was to come back as president, somebody is saying when I come back. But it's not about me, it's about the Zambian people. And I think I'll provide the best leadership together with my colleagues. That I can tell you. But it's not about me. Because I'm willing to serve under whoever will come, as long as he's willing to be part of the College of Leaders. So that's what we need now. And let me also take advantage of this. You, you, recently you talked about uh, the power outages and the economic challenges facing the country. However, uh, somebody reminded me that when you were in power, uh, before you left, there were electric power outages, there were a lot of some of these economic challenges. So they said, what are you criticizing the current administration for when they experience similar difficulties? if not worse, under your administration, Mr. President. Okay, we keep going back to the same question. <laughs> the blame game of uh, the past and so on. Anyway, it will be up to Zambians now to decide the way that the acute uh, problems they are getting through now were the same with the ones they were getting through during our reign. Uh, we were able to export power, we were able to rationalize power, but not in the manner we are seeing. 16 hours uh, road shedding? And how do you expect that person by the roadside who is busy welding, or that little young lady who is busy trying to do a hair salon, going to make ends meet? There are a lot of people who depend on electricity. Road shedding management has been there, and it's part of the things people who supply the energy do worldwide, but not in the manner we have seen in Zambia. They've deprived the Zambians of energy. So, I think you have answered the question where when you said Zambians should compare where we were when I left and where we are here. We've done two and a half years, getting to three now under UPND. I would like them to compare and contrast and make the right decision come 2026. So, Mr. President, before you go, what would be your message to the people of Zambia, especially? with the ongoing political tension uh, because there have been accusations and counter accusations and Zambia is really not noted for that. Zambia is noted as a peaceful country, one of the uh, peaceful countries in sub-Saharan Africa. You've enjoyed smooth power transfer from one, pa uh, from one party to the next. You handed over power peacefully. What would be your message to the people of Zambia? with regards to trying to ease the rising political tension. Because church groups have said it, that there needs to be, the tension, the tension needs to be reduced. Otherwise, it could be dangerous for everybody. Yeah, but if you have got uh, a stubborn leadership, what you do is speak out. Speak out. So I expect the Zambians to speak out. And speak out and speak out until they behave. I know that they'll try to intimidate them by bringing policemen, uh, heavily armed, and so on, but uh, within the law, people should speak out. And within the law, people can demonstrate. Processions are allowed. They are part of uh, freedom of expression. It's, 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 it's the open of democracy. I, I know democracy is a concept which is alien to most African countries because the people who originated it are still experimenting with it. But the truth of the matter is we have chosen democracy. And if we have chosen democracy, let's have other views prevail. Let's hear the critics. Let's also allow them to hold meetings and share their opinion with others instead of stifling in the manner that we are seeing. But if we continue doing that, there will be an implosion. And when that happens, obviously, we will all be losers. So the age Zambians to speak out, the church to speak out, and the every civil society organization to come out and state exactly how they are seeing things instead of you know stifling uh, opinion by appearing in court every day locking people up and that won't do because uh, when that reaches the, the city it's an explosion and when it explodes all of us will be losers the police will be losers 
the ruling party will be losers, PF will be losers, I will be a loser, everyone will be a loser. So for now, let those who have got ears in government listen to the cries of the people and then do the right thing. There's no harm in subsidies, is there? By the way, is, 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 is subsidies a dangerous way? Is it a criminal way? Is it uh, odious? It's not. So let's talk about subsidies. Who can we subsidize, for example, so that we, the people continue living and then better days come when we do the subsidies? Everywhere I've uh, studied, they have some kind of uh, 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 subsidy. And it's time for Zambia now to think about what areas to subsidize so that people begin living again, breathing again, so they're able to participate in the economy and the politics and everything else. Thank you very much, Mr. President. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.